What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video we are going to be talking about routing in Angular. And if you're familiar with Angular, you know that Angular is what's called batteries included. And I don't know who made up that term or why they decided to call it batteries included, but batteries included basically means it's got everything you need. You need routing, it's got routing. You need forms, it's got forms pretty much everything under the sun you could possibly need to build a web application you're gonna get with angular and routing once again is no different and in the a right now we are in the age of the spa <laughs> the spa is a acronym for a single page application single page app and when they say single page like they really mean it so Let's assume you are on just a traditional web page. Let's say you are, I don't know, you're going to like a government website. You're looking at the website for your city. It's probably a little old. It's probably not an Angular or React app yet, but you're on it anyway because you're looking at events. And I'm literally, I'm just making this up. I'm just <laughs> literally just making this up. But you're looking at events on your web page on this government web page and you for some reason you decide that this web page is not doing it for you so you hit the good old back button you hit the back button what what happens when you hit the back button essentially what happens is is that you go out to the internet you're going to either query google or um I don't know, maybe like if you're just going back on the government web page, you're going to go back on the the web page that you're on and it's going to send back HTML and an entirely different page is going to reload. You are actually querying the server. You're sending back information. The new uh, web page is going to be gone. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be thrown out. And now you are going to be presented with new information. But because we are web developers and we are interested in developing the latest and the greatest technologies, nowadays what we have is all of the page redirects and going, going in between pages, choosing pages. Let's say you want to go to... Uh, I don't know, you want to go to like a detail page, so you go to a detail page, and what's going to happen is that all of this is going to be handled by Angular. Literally, Angular is going to use code in order to do all of this. There's no, not going to be any actual HTML queries being sent back, and Angular is going to actually handle all of the front end, and that even includes the redirects, all the routing, and this greatly increases the speed. There's a reason, not just because it's cool and it's the new thing that we want to do, but we do this for a reason because it drastically cuts down on the amount of time. So whenever a computer has to go out to the cloud and get a new web page, that is time. And number number two, that's time that you don't have any real control over sending that request like you just have to send the request and it has to go out through the internet all through the tubes of the internet and it has to come back for you to see on a web page that takes a lot of time that's the reason why uh modern apps tend to use spas single page applications you're not actually rendering anything so let's that is enough theory for today let's go ahead and go in here and let's actually start creating our routes so in uh angular if you clicked whenever you went to ng serve and if you look down here um you go and you went to ng new and you said my app what happened was when you stepped through this process it's going to ask you if you want routing and if you had route if you said yes to routing it's going to generate this app routing module ts thing for you and inside here you will be able to be, you are given a nice little place to be given uh your routes but if you didn't 
you just have to add this router module into your app.module.ts. And once again, if you clicked yes for the routing, it's gonna be here already in the form of app.routing module. But if it's not, just go, go ahead and go in there and add it. So first thing that we are going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to start registering our routes. And registering routes really isn't that complicated to do. All you do is you just go into here, you go path, and we're going to create what every web page has. You're going to have like a home page route. So we're gonna go in here, component, component, and we're going to we're going to make a home page. We don't even have a home page yet for our cool little app here. And we're also going to make sure that the path match is full. So you can have prefix, you can have full, but path match full just means what it says. You have to match this exactly the way it is or it's not going to work. Prefix will match by the prefix. Pretty simple. So next thing that we want to do is we also want to add what's called a wildcard route. People are not always going to be using our website the way that we want to. So it's always good to just go ahead up front and create that wildcard route so that you have a web page that people can go to when their components are not found. And we don't have um, this web page either. So we're going to put not found component. And that's going to be uh, a wildcard route so that path match isn't going to apply. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to generate the home component and we need to generate the not found component. So I'm just gonna go in here. I'm gonna go call this one not found. You can call it whatever you want to. You call it 404. I probably wouldn't call it 404. I'll just probably stick to not found, but uh, you can feel free to name it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then we're going to go into here and let's see if we can go ahead and pull these in. So I'm going to go control dot, add import, go here. And let me see, not found. Cannot find not found components. I don't know why it's not finding it. Okay, so best thing to do, I might have to, I'm just going to have to bring this in manually. So go not found and we're going to go into here. So not found and not found component. And, oh, that is the reason. It needs to be a lowercase f. So I'm gonna go back in here, going to go not found, not found, and that should do it. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to make sure two things. First, we need to go into our index HTML and make sure that you have this base href if you don't have base href, it won't work. And if you don't have the app root, it's not going to work either. So make sure that you have both of those things right there. So now we're going to go into here and we also need to add what's called a router outlet. If you don't have the router outlet in the app component or any file for that matter, um, it's not going to do the routing for you. So you need to make sure that you have those as well too. The next thing is we need to go into our actual index or we need to go into the actual app.module.ts and we need to, let me see here, that for some reason it added two of them and I'm not sure why. So need to add import and that fixes that right there. Also make sure that we have our app routing in there and that looks good. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and let's start actually hooking up our router link. We need to hook up a router link. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go router link 
and put in the slash here and the way that you actually can tell what to put into this is whatever you put right here or uh, yeah, whatever you put within the path. Okay, so our router is working. Now what we need to do is we actually need to go into uh, our component and we need to make one for the wildcard and we need to make one, make this look a little bit uh, or make this a little bit more robust. Right now it's just kind of like this one link, but we actually need to add links onto it so that we can be able to navigate like we would a nav bar. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go, we're gonna bring this down, bring that div down there. And what we are going to do is we are going to make a dynamic. We're going to make, some, we are going to make a dynamic nav bar. And this is pretty important because you don't want to make a nav bar that is hard coded. You want to be able to build a like a a, a, a dynamic one that you can just iterate over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a little interface up here, and we are going to go string, and then we're going to go exact, and we're going to go ahead and toss in a boolean in here, and then what we are going to go down here and do is we are going to create our own little nav or array nav so that once again we can have something we can iterate through and not have all these values hard-coded in there and look super ugly so what we're going to do we're going to go link and this link is going to be our home link and then we're going to go name then we're going to go home then we're gonna go exact, and this is gonna be a Boolean, so this is going to be true. And you'll know what the exact is doing here in a second, but we're gonna go down here, we're gonna go link, and then we're gonna go, we're gonna, this one's going to be a bad route, just so that we can have something to test. Then go up here, we're gonna have name, and we're gonna have bad, call this bad route actually let's capitalize that because it's going to go on the web page and it could look bad so bad route then we're going to go down here it's going to be exact and it's going to be a true looking good so what we're going to do we're going to go back to our um, html here and we're going to make a nice little for loop that's going to iterate through all of this instead of having all just this thing right here so we're gonna go here then go down hit that tab bar and we're gonna have a nice little for loop so we're gonna go ng4 let item of and it was called a nav let me actually make sure let me put that over here yes so we can have something to kind of go off of here and then here we're gonna go router link and because this is being iterated over, we want to put it within a property binding so that we can just go ahead and just toss in this item dot, let me see, what is the link? I don't, oh yeah. So item dot link. Looking good. And then we're going to go here, router link active. And if it's active, we want to show and I'll show you guys what this is here in a second and what we're going to do also do here is we're going to have router link active options so you can actually go in you can have extra options in here and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure it's an exact route and if it's an exact route we're going to go ahead and pass in the item exact just like that looking good and then here, we're going to pass in our item.name. So we're gonna go item.name. So what is the router link.active? And if you want to uh, make your, so whenever you click on, and I'll explain this 
uh, more here in a second. So we're going to go just put this in here for now. So, and we're just going to put in red here and I'll show you guys what this does. So ng serve. So we're going to go ahead, serve this thing up, see what it looks like. And hopefully, hopefully it works. Okay. So, and looking good. So whenever we are on the exact web page, what's going to happen is that this red CSS is going to light up. So if it's a bad route, it's going to light up the bad route, but if it's the home route, it's going to be lit up with red. And that is pretty much it for our routing. That's uh, a big portion of the router. We've got a router set up. Now we can move on to bigger and better things. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.